Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Friday. Hello. <laughs> I'm Deborah Birnbaum. I'm the executive editor of TV for Variety. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to um, The Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe and welcome out Kelly Garner, the star. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? Do you like? Yeah. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> So let's start at the beginning. What made you choose this part? Uh, well, I realized it was a, I realized it was a good opportunity for me. Maybe out of everything that I had going on, I was like, oh, this. If if I can do what I think I can do with it, this is actually a real opportunity for me. So I think that was that set the fear aside of playing Marilyn Monroe. I was like, I'm just gonna be seen. <laughs> How did you get offered the role? How did it come to you? Uh, well, initially, I think I was always on a short list of the directors, which I, I didn't know about until after like I met with her. I was like, oh, I would have liked that information going in. I would have known I had some leverage or something. But um, I met with her, and she was a really interesting um, woman and had a really interesting on take on this. And uh, then I had to... What went from being an offer <laughs> went me jumping through so many hoops to actually have to, 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 to get the role, which I was really appreciative of because it made me realize how much I really wanted it. You know, you can't deny when you're like, okay, I'm going to go test for this for the fourth time. Like, it, you like to do this thing as an actor where you protect yourself and you're like, oh, I really... <laughs> I really don't want it. I don't. I don't really need it. And then, you know, when you when you test four times, you you kind of can't deny how badly you want it. You're like, oh, you just made me realize. So it was nice. It was it was a gift. And then I'd practically done all the scenes. So I was like, cool, we're ready to go. <laughs> Were you intimidated at all about the idea of taking on such an iconic role? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. And she's been done many times. And. I think every actress brings a really interesting flavor and perspective to her. Um, so I just, I just wanted, I just, I just wanted to make sure I did a good job, you know. And especially when you combine her with some mental health struggles, you know, you just, you don't want that to become a joke, you know. You want to take it really seriously. So there was a lot of intimidation, um, but there was a lot there for me that I, I related to. So I wanted to kind of like embrace myself a bit, my own struggles, and also like embrace this really beautiful, eternal woman and, you know, a little bit of a different side of her story. What parts of her did you relate to? Uh, the, 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 well, let's just be honest. It's just a small room of us. Um, I'm a really, I'm really hard on myself. I'm a perfectionist. I believe I have a really good work ethic and, uh, um, at the same time, I started acting when I was about 15, 16. So I dropped out of high school in order to do so. So I've always wanted to be taken, I've always wanted to be thought of as smart. And there was a kind of a formal education that I missed out on. Or I didn't want to just be considered like this cute, blonde, kind of California thing. So I think there was a lot of fight for me to, to, uh, to, to, to let people see that side of me. Um, you know, I mean, we had different circumstances. I had a really beautiful uh, childhood and, and really wonderful parents, but just uh, just some of her neuroses, you know, I think I really understand. And then wanting wanting something so bad that you don't want anything to, to stop you. Some of her relationships kind of mirror some of my relationships, <laughs> the men I choose and maybe why I choose them. Uh, so yeah, there were just some things that I, I felt like, I felt like I understood. So let's start with your research process. How did you start to research and prepare for this role? I just watched everything, you know. I think I'd seen like a couple films. You think, you, you, you know, you, you know who Marilyn Monroe is, but I actually realized that I, I, I hadn't really seen many of her films. So I started watching everything. I got this box set at, at Best Buy. <laughs> and, and I just spent a weekend with friends who would come in and out of my apartment just watching every bit of, uh, of her film, watching her interviews, staring at tons and tons and tons of photos, trying to, uh, you know, understand what I thought was maybe going on uh, behind her eyes. Um, uh, I think The Misfits was my favorite film of hers because I think she's a little broken in it. I think for the first time she actually became a human to me. It's it's hard for me to even fathom that she still even playing her that she existed. So The Misfits was the one piece where I felt like she was actually a real 
woman. You can even see, and I think it's because it's 60s filmmaking too, and Arthur Miller was trying to take her away from that 50s song and dance, tongue and cheek thing, and you can even see, you can even see her, her, her breakdown physically as a woman in that film. And so she just became really real for me. I was, it was really, it was, it was a lot. It was, it was embarrassing, you know, going too big, you know, finding that voice, dancing around, and just trusting some of my friends and my acting coach to kind of guide me in the right direction. And, and uh, I only had like three weeks, so it was pretty. I mean, the audition process, I would love to see <laughs> those tapes because, you know, it had to be really big uh, in order for me to kind of, hopefully find some type of subtlety. I mean, still now when I watch it back, I wish I had these dials because I'm like, oh, dial down there and dial up there. You know, it's never gonna be, be, be perfect. But, uh, but, but yeah, it was just throwing a lot of things on the wall and, and seeing what felt good too. What made me feel like her at times was, was important, yeah. There were so many pieces that went into creating this character. I mean, you, let's talk about the voice. How did you find that voice? Uh, well, I would sing a lot with her, actually. Um, I bought like a best of the Marilyn Monroe albums um, because I, f I would always find when I would sing certain songs of just any artist, you kind of start to adapt their vocal intonations or like how they clip their words. So I, I started just singing a lot with her. Uh, repeating, you know, lines, like watching things and being like, oh, like I, I you know, uh, oh, I, you know, you just kind of like repeat little things, finding where it was. But, but at the same, I mean, to do a voice or to not do a voice <laughs> was really, it was really hard for, for m m me and the director. Uh, the, it was, it wasn't always great. Like for me, I can tell what day one was versus what day 42 was. And it like, to me, it's so embarrassing. And I'm like, hurry scene, get out, oh, that's day one. That's like first week, like just get off, get off the screen and then it'll like meet with day 42 where I feel like I'm much more relaxed. Like some of the beach stuff, all the beach stuff was actually even as Norma Jean and Marilyn was all the last day of shooting. And I felt like those are actually some of my favorite scenes because there's a fluidity, like a ease in some of those scenes where I'm like, oh, I'm just a little more in this version of this character that I've created. But, you know, also, also to be honest, a little bit of vodka helped me find the voice. You know, my friends, my friends now tell me sometimes when I go out and I've had a drink, they're like that my Marilyn will come out because sometimes <laughs> it's just, yeah, you know, sometimes it's just one of those things where you have to get out of your way and you know, and you have to be okay with like making a fool out of yourself. So yeah, sometimes it was like one or two little drinks that just got any fear of, of looking stupid or sounding stupid out of the way. And then, and then you know, I don't know, then it just kind of came. Not, not that I'm saying I drank every day or, or anything like that, but you know, since it's a little icebreaker. <laughs> was there one piece of advice that your acting coach gave you that helped you get through this? Uh, yeah, let my light shine, you know? Uh, I think it, I think my acting coach was a very important choice for me. I was like, do I bring one? Because that can be a weird dynamic sometimes to bring one and like directors can get really weird. Uh, but then I thought it was also kind of like Super Marilyn to maybe have somebody in this, this thing and that, that sh the director even couldn't penetrate. But he's, I've known uh, him for a really long time and I can beat myself up a lot as an actor and I've been doing it for so long. So you have really good years and then you have really shitty years. And he was the one person that wouldn't allow me to go into a negative headspace. Because when I go to a negative headspace, uh, all my creativity just goes down the drain. I just don't allow myself to be free enough or to love myself enough to 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 do the job at hand and to play Marilyn Monroe. I mean, I, uh, the hardest part was waking up every day and laying in that bed and being like, "Okay, I can do this. <laughs> like, I can, I can, I can do this." And so he was not just a coach, but a good friend that was like, "Fuck yeah, you can do this." <laughs> He's like, "You're Kelly motherfucking Garner." He's like, "You can. You, when you connect, you know, you 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 do it great." So he just he was like a cheerleader, you know. Sometimes you need somebody to believe in you, and it can be a little hard to believe in yourself. Yeah. Was there one scene that was particularly challenging for you? All of therapy was 
particularly challenging for me. It's one of the things that actually I was most excited to shoot. Uh, what in, uh, attracted me to the project because I love therapy. I, I go weekly. I like that sounding board. I like to be able to talk to somebody and not feel judged, like kind of try and figure out life. So, so to hear that she was always doing that and spent so much of her money on it and this fictional therapist is maybe somebody you wish she would have had. I feel like he kind of asked different questions than maybe were asked back then. But that stuff was really hard because I had to allow like half of myself and my own truth to come through and, and meet it with hers. But it was also really hard because they, it was the all the first seven days, the first week of shooting was every therapy scene. So from, and that was the only thing we actually shot in order in sequence was therapy. So it was nice to kind of develop that relationship. But I was like, you would have thought, you know, like, like give me something easy, like give me like a little Norma Jean or something. But they jumped me right into like hardcore, a lot of subtext in those scenes, you know. So I think those were the hardest. And it was fun. Talk about the challenge of playing a real person versus a fictional character. I mean, how do you find your way into that? By trying to meet it with my own reality, you know, uh, you have to change the circumstances, but you know, you have to find your your own truth because, well, none of us, anyone really alive, doesn't really know what she was like, you know. And all I had was a few interviews, which were nice. You see a different side of her, and her films. So I was just. I just wanted to make sure, you know, it was like this balance of, of hopefully not doing too much and then not, not doing enough because I knew there were some inherent things inside me. Uh, you know, we both, we're both California girls, you know, we both kind of grew up. So I, was, I knew there was some things where I was like, oh, I don't want to lose my own giggle, like my own light, like my own thing, my own truth. So I think you just have to balance it with, with, with what's on the page and what her story is and, and you know your own life or else it or else it doesn't feel I don't think it feels real yeah there obviously have been a lot of stories and movies made about Marilyn's life but this one was particularly based on a book a biography that mm -hmm. had written did you read the book yeah, yeah yeah that was also one of my processes was was reading the book of course it was the first thing that I did yeah I was shocked and what did that book tell you about her well, everything. <laughs> I mean, everything. I wish, I mean, I don't because I would not have wanted to shoot any more <laughs> than what I shot. But there's, having read the book, there's so much that obviously has to get left out. But I just, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know her mother and her grandmother was schizophrenic, you know? So it wasn't just her mother. So she had like a, a lineage of, of women who kind of succumbed to this uh, disease. And so I didn't understand her own paranoia of succumbing to that. Uh, and that's got to be really scary, you know, to have something like that in your family. I don't understand how much she was passed around from home to home when she was younger. I just didn't, I didn't understand her fortitude, really. And then that's kind of what the book takes you through, because she just does not stop until, unfortunately, she does, you know. So the woman who played your mother was Susan Sarandon. Can yeah. you talk about working with her? <laughs> yeah. Susan's awesome. Uh, I was really intimidated to work with Susan Sarandon and Emily Watson because that was actually one of my first scenes was with them both in the mental institution. I was like, oh, my Lord. <laughs> I was like, you just want to be able to keep up. But uh, Susan's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is. Uh, there's no pretense to her, you know. She's she she's ex she's an open book. She'll talk about anything. In fact, I enjoyed talking to her more than working with her because when the cameras rolled, she w would become that person. And so, like for the longest time, I just didn't even know if she liked me. But she taught me like a really valuable lesson. Uh, they both did because Susan Susan wouldn't give me anything uh, in a scene. Like she wouldn't. She was really cold to me in a way, and I think that allowed for me to have the space of like, mm, like, do I go forward? Do I go back? Like, what, what, what's happening? And and Emily embraced me so much, and and complimented me so much, and both those women kind of knew. They kind of gave me the energy of like what that relationship might have been, been like. And so it was, it was fun. I mean, she's, she's great. She's really, I, I like her as a woman too. You know, she's really vocal and, and. Uh, and proactive, and she's just really, I've never met an actress quite like Susan Sarandon. It must have been so empowering to work on a set with so many powerful women. 
It, it must have been what? Pa empowering? empowering. Yeah, yeah. The director, our first AD, for a while was a woman, then they replaced her with a man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who I liked, but not quite as much. Um, but Gersha Phillips' costume, all the wigs were done by a woman. Uh, it, was, it was great because they were also uh, a little more evolved than me, had kind of lessons like in life ahead of me. So uh, it was just really, it was really beautiful. It was just a, ga it was just a gang of them. Mm -hmm. It was really lovely. Also talk about you, you know, you had to play Norma Jean to Marilyn from ages 15 to 36. I mean, yeah. that was quite a challenge. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like Norma Jean, though. I felt like there was, like, free license to play Norma Jean a little bit. No one really quite knew what she was like. Uh, so that was a little more, f more fun. And she also has a really fun journey of kind of, like, discovering her feminine qualities. But, uh, but yeah, it was hard because on any given day, I would go from 1960s Maryland to 1950s Maryland to 1940s Norma Jean, which it's about an hour and a half to switch looks. The, the, the AD actually realized that I spent a total of eight days out of the schedule in hair and makeup, which is, which is a lot, uh, which was a lot. So it was hard. Sometimes it was disjointing to go from, from one to, to the other. Yeah, I think Maryland is so physical. You know, I think she's so smart because she, I think she's intuitive, uh, and I think she can communicate without really saying anything at all with just her body language. So it was, you know, a challenge to find that kind of younger. I'm not quite in control of my body to like, oh, like I'm kind of getting this, than to like the power of like, I, I own it. And so that was fun because there's so much still of my own body language that I don't own as a woman. You know, she, she stepped me out of a comfort zone as like a, as a woman, you know, I don't, oh, I didn't always embrace or, or know what to do with my own sexuality. So it was kind of fun to get to step into her skin and hold my way, my body in a way that like I would never do as Kelly, but it's kind of like, it seeps in every once in a while. And I'm kind of like, oh, it's, it's nice. I think that, I don't know, roundabout way of, <laughs> of answering question. Well, it leads into my next question. What did you learn from playing her? Have you held on to any of that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the most important thing I learned uh, from playing her was uh, that, it, that it, it's, it's, it doesn't just come naturally to be happy, that it can be work to be happy. And I think I knew that a little bit, but there was a point for myself as an actress uh, where I stopped having fun. I was kind of burnt out. I felt like I'd been doing it for a long time. I wanted more. I was like, I deserve more. I'm, I'm, I work hard, and I stopped having fun. And that was my biggest fear, having dropped out of high school, <laughs> to not enjoy being an actress because I didn't, I, I wouldn't know what else to do with my life and I'd found myself there and I found it generating absolutely nothing in my environment and I got really stuck for a couple of years in my life. That's actually why I started going to therapy. So if Marilyn taught me anything was, um, she reminded me to have fun again, you know, to, to have fun. It, could, it, it takes work but, but sometimes you need the work in order to just play and to keep a giggle inside, which I think is one of her quotes. So, so really the lesson was is like life's hard and we all go through it and we all don't believe in ourselves at times and feel really like down in the gutter. But you got to remember to like when you step out that door to just like turn it on. And once you force yourself to like say, I'm going to have fun, like there's, there's a momentum, there's an energy behind it that just follows you throughout the day. And, and I had more fun shooting this than I have in a really long time, which is surprising because I, there was, this project had so many question marks for me. Like I, I almost didn't do it because I was so terrified that I couldn't control like the outcome, like how I wanted it to be. And, uh, really I had, I had the most, the most fun and it's been the most rewarding and it's really, it's made me really happy. She, she, she gave me a little light back. Yeah. Is there a scene you're proudest of? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. I really like all the beach stuff, I got to say. But that was like the last kind of day of shooting. You know, I love that dream scene at the end. Um, and Norma Jean on the beach with the ice cream cones. You know what scene I hated shooting, maybe because it was four in the morning, 
But when I watch it back, I love is the opening of this, her meeting Joe DiMaggio. I think maybe that, as I watch it back, is maybe one of my most fun scenes, scenes to watch, Some, something about it. Like, I even get excited. Like, I even, like, see a little Marilyn every once in a while. I'm like, oh, snap. I don't know how I did that, but I like that scene. Like, that. so weird, the scenes you think are going to be terrible while you're shooting it, you're like, you know, you, you can't win them all, especially when you do seven scenes a day for a four hour mini series. Like that was one thing my coach told me, he's like pumpkin, like some of them you're gonna f kill. Sorry, I, I cuss a lot. Some of them you're gonna kill and some of them, they're just gonna be okay. And you're gonna have to let the ones that are just okay kind of roll by because you can't, there's no way you're gonna kill us all. And so the scenes that I thought were like, I'd be like, all right, we're done, you know, it's just okay, are actually some of my favorites. And the ones that I was like, ah, I killed that, I like watched back and I'm like, what was I doing with my face? And like with my voice there, you know, like, oh, I, I, it felt like her, but it was, it wasn't, it wasn't. So it's like, that's also the key to auditioning. Like whenever I go in and I think I nailed it, like then 10 minutes later I go, oh man, man, that means I didn't, you know? <laughs> like oftentimes the projects I book are the ones where I've like fallen on my face, literally in like the audition room or like, you know, just the ones that you're like, oh, this is never gonna happen, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. I have no gauge on myself sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, talk about all your costumes. How did those help you get into character? You must have, I don't even know how many costume changes you had. 99. Oh my God. Yeah, 99 costume changes. It was exhausting, uh, the whole, the whole, t <laughs> the whole ten f first ten days I had to get out there early uh, was costume fittings, and while wow, fun, like the first two days are fun, the, the rest just becomes so boring because you're kind of like you just you don't care anymore. You're like dresses are beautiful, but you're like exhausted at looking at your own body, and and then you you know you compare yourself to her, and and the wardrobe department was just slathered in so many photographs of Marilyn throughout the years that it was almost like wallpaper. But it's extremely intimidating because she's so beautiful, you know? Like, she, to me, she's just so beautiful. So you're constantly looking at yourself and seeing what's wrong, like what's off, you know? And you're like, oh man. <laughs> like, so, but getting in the costumes was great, you know? It was also really smart of Gersha Phillips because as Norma Jean, young, young, like, ugly, dark wig, young, <laughs> I hate that wig. <laughs> She's really like gawky and kind of covered up and then as she hits Norma Jean, it was all my own figure and then as she goes into Maryland is when we would start to bring some some hip pads in, into it and some little, some little butt pads because she was really, you know, really, really uh, a lot curvier than I am or just a little thicker than I am. So that was fun, you know, you would get those, those hip pads in I would change my walk completely. You get those hip pads in and that skirt just pulled super tight and then all of a sudden you just, you'd walk and there was just like a, a completely different movement. Or the points, I like the Norma Jean points <laughs> in the bra, like there's something about those that make you just like really hold yourself differently and you're like, oh, that's why she was like always posing, you know, like that, because they're like these torpedoes. So it was, um, <laughs> I think that's my favorite, one of my favorite sequences. That could be one of my favorite scenes, not for like an acting standpoint, but, but when she does the, uh, it's in episode one, she, she does the, her famous kind of playboy shoot. She's got this little, this cute little white overalls on and the points. I don't know if you guys saw part one. I really hope you saw part one first because it can be really hard to kind of jump into part two. But uh, anyways. Um, did you rehearse at all for your scenes? I had, no, no, there wasn't really much rehearsal, but I had a big kind of talk through for a whole weekend with the director. We went through the, the, the script and we, we really kind of brought out subtext, um, really talked about where she was, where she was going and how to kind of like, you know, make her, make her grow and evolve. But I love a lot of rehearsal. Like I think my favorite medium as an actress is theater because you just get so much rehearsal that the lines and the action and the movement become second nature where you can really connect to that subtext because that's that's where the good stuff is. It's never what you're saying. It's like what you're not saying, you know? And so I love the rehearsal process. So I hated that I didn't have it, but like we just we just didn't have time. You know, it was just like they crammed in a lot in, 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 a, in very little time. So so I'm, I'm actually thankful for the little experience I do have in television or, or I actually don't think I could have done this, you know. Um, but no, not much, not much rehearsal, not much rehearsal at all. Yeah. 
Um, why do you think Marilyn Monroe is such an iconic figure? Well, because she died young, I think is a, is a big reason. You know, there's, there's many, you know, icons who sadly just left too soon, and so they're kind of captured in this very specific moment, this very specific time. I think we also fantasize the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, and she's such a face of that anyways. But there's something about Marilyn's vulnerability. I think it's her, her weakest point about herself and her strongest. And I think it's that duality, you know, she's a, a the, the confliction that was in her. She's a Gemini. I mean, I'm newly into this, but, <laughs> you know, they've got the dual personality. But there's, <laughs> there's just something, there's something transcendent about her, you know. Uh, you, you, you see a photograph, or I feel like her, she, she wore her soul. Her, her vulnerability, it was just, it was all there. And I think in a world, and especially in a business where we can tend to like put up so many fronts or walls or guards or things that we think, you know, we stack ourselves with things that we think make us cool or, you know, I, I don't I don't think she really did that. You know, I think she really allowed for herself to come through and I think it's everlasting and I think you see it, you know, like she sparkles because it's, it's, it's all from her insides, you know. <clears throat> Do you think a story like Marilyn Monroe could happen today? I think it has happened. I mean, I think it does happen all the time, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think fortunately today we have a little bit more of a grasp on mental health, on medications. You know, she was taking so many different ones. She was mixing them with alcohol. I think there's components to the tragedy of her life that are, we're much more aware of now that could be prevented. But I think her kind of rise to, to stardom and her confusion of, of, of who she really is, I think we see it actually happen quite a lot. Um, and, and so it's sad, you know. So what's next for you? What's, uh, what's next on your agenda? What are you going to do next? I'm so bored because I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like trying. That's the hardest thing about being an actor is when you're not acting, you're not acting, you're not working. And so it's your responsibility to like make your day function and make it healthy. And <laughs> I'm not so good at that all the time. But for me, after this and, and you know, my team, my representatives, I think we're looking for the right thing, you know? For me, I've also never been an actress who's uh, just done anything, you know? I've always loved to be very specific about my projects. I actually was with an agent at one time who wasn't the right agent for me, and, and I, I stopped listening to myself out of fear because I was like 28, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm like hitting my 30s, and so I started working a lot more on things that I actually didn't want to. But um, I'm looking for the right thing, and I'm reading a lot, and... Uh, I hope it's I hope it's beautiful and I hope it comes soon because really <laughs> really I'm I can be a disaster uh, when I don't have a, a set schedule that somebody else has made for me in front of me. What do you look for in a part? What attracts you to something? What makes you say yes? It's all it's always very very different. It's obviously always the character. Uh, it's hard for me to play a character that I don't like. You know, uh, then uh, you just don't have any fun with it. But you know, usually a little bit of strength with a little bit of weakness. You know, like I like I like, or a little bit off. I love to play like left of center. This is actually one of the very first times I've embraced more of like my woman or like the bombshell that Marilyn was. You know, I often in my earlier career would play drug addicts or like you know wallflowers or, or people who didn't understand themselves. So this is this is one of the first times that I've embraced that, and that's also something that. That merit that will stick with me is is I I'm a little bit I'm ready to step out into to more maybe womanly roles as well you know and, you know not stuck in that kind of strange so it's 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 all really it's very different each time. Can you see yourself doing more television? Yeah, totally. I mean, television's become this really cool thing. I mean, it's so silly. I. I had to get over a lot of bullshit, preconceived notions before I did this show, uh, My Generation, which was on ABC for like four episodes, and then they took me from that and put me on the show called Pan Am. But this was, this was a time in my life where I was fighting it because I, 
I had this judgment, you know, I, I was like, I've done cool like indie films and I've worked with like some of the coolest actors and directors and I don't want to fucking do TV. You know, I had this whole brainwash thing that I think a lot of people did. And I'm so happy that I'm happy for that experience with that agent that I don't like but because he actually <laughs> he actually did force me out of something that was I was really blind to. Um, so I love television, and I think it's become such a such a beautiful thing. And I think some of my favorite things, you know, are you know on television now over you know going going to the movies. So, so yeah, of course. And when it's good, it's consistent, and consistency is always something I'm searching for. So it's it that's nice, you know. Yeah. You talked a little bit before about the audition process. How do you get through an audition? How do you prepare for an audition? Well. <laughs> Uh, for me, you know, it's so different. It's fun to, to know a lot of actors because everyone's process is really different for me. I have to be, I have to know what I'm doing. I cannot cold read something. In fact, I do myself a disservice all the time just out of like pure laziness, you know, or if I maybe like am not connected to it, I'll go in, you know, I'll have the appointment like a week ahead of time and I'll put it off until the morning of and I just, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm like, you know, learning my lines as I'm driving. I'm like, what? You're never, this isn't, you're not, you don't win this way. So for me, when an audition, when I win or when I want something, it's just, it's a lot of work, you know, it's, it's learning the lines first, sometimes going really big, sometimes going really small, knowing your lines so much that then maybe you can like, for me, sometimes I have a drink and something totally different comes out. Uh, and then, you know, you just kind of like play around. I love, I, I like, I will overdo it. You know, I will like grind it and grind it and grind it and grind it because the most important thing to me in an audition is to be present, you know, is to just sit or stand in front of those people and actually have the conversation with the person, you know. Sometimes you get stuck in this weird fourth wall where you're like not actually looking at the casting director, like your eyes are blurry and you're like, who am I talking to? You know, this can't feel connected. And so I just, I need to know it. I need to know it so well that I can just, I can just be real and alive and like kind of on my feet. How'd you get your big break? What do you consider your big break? I think I've had a lot of like really, oh, I don't know if I've had a big break, you know? I feel like that's kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm still waiting for the big break, but I've had lots of really interesting ones. And I would say my first was, was uh, hooking up with a director named Larry Clark. And he did this film called Bully. It was one of my first films years ago. And he really took this very sweet California version of me that just happened to me missing a tooth because I was like 16 and I was going through some. And he dyed my hair blue and put me in like black fishnets and, and you know, like l didn't let me wear my flipper. You know, your flipper. Does, do you guys know what that is? He like made me take it out. But he was one of those first directors that was uh, extremely influential to the type of art that I fi found myself really attracted to. And that, well, actually, Mike Mills, who did, who did Beginners and Thumbsucker, which I was in, he actually gave me my first start, which is a short film called Architecture Reassurance that Larry Clark saw. But I'd say that and then, and then being 19 and, and working with Martin Scorsese was pretty cool. That was like a big, like, you know, a big win, but I've had lots of fun little pops, you know, and I'm 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 thankful for each of them because they they they've all kind of turned and put me in a very different direction. And and if anyone knows anything about like more of the body of my work, like I, I it is a little all over the place, and it's kind of something that I that I I've grown to to love, you know. And so I can just hope, I can only hope as an actor to just kind of keep getting to do totally different things and totally different mediums with completely different artists because I, I, I like to adapt, you know, to my environment. And I like to become people that I'm not. It makes me feel like I'm living more than just one life. Um, what's the best advice you've ever gotten from any of those people that you've worked with? Ooh. I wish I would have gotten these questions beforehand. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I mean, I just like, you know, it's so hard to, to think of. Um, um, you know, that just that you don't always see yourself correctly. Um, I don't think I like have like a sound bit or like a thing that somebody said to me that sticks with me, but I think I was going back to Bully, going back to Larry Clark, like 
I never understood during the filming why he hired me to play like this prostitute slash heroin addict because like I'd, I'd never had sex, I'd never done drugs, like I hadn't even really drank, you know, I was like really pure and I, I didn't think I could do it and he kept, he's like, no, 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 you'll, you'll be great. And he was like, Kelly, here's, here's why. He's like, I can, here's what's interesting, here's why I put you in this role. I can fuck you up like physically. I can dye your hair blue. I can focus on like your cute little messed up mouth. I can put, you know, she was a cutter. I can make you look and convince people that you're this girl in this movie. But what I can't do is make people care about you if you're really this person who's so lost. So I love your purity because I can mess you up and we can, we can do a great scene and you can be a great actress, but I need to see the hope there in order for me to want people to even care about this girl. And that was a really interesting lesson for me uh, that's kind of always, always stuck. Yeah. So you're talking to a room full of actors. What advice would you offer them? I know. Shit. Mm. What advice do I have? <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, uh, don't give up. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I shouldn't be giving advice to anybody. You know, uh, have fun. You know, have fun. Have fun. Uh, that's the one thing that really trapped me for a couple years. Or, or there was a couple years where I disappeared as an actress, not not really by choice, but but by the mental state that I had allowed myself to get in, uh, by beating myself up, by not believing like that I was worth anything or like people wanted to work with me, and I went to this really weird place in my head. Um, so. And that's why I'm so thankful for this project. I mean, if you would have told me five years ago, six years ago, that I would play Marilyn Monroe for Lifetime, I would have, like, laughed, you know? I would have just been like, oh, boy, <laughs> what happens to me? Uh, but that was, that was a really young mind because this project brought a life back inside of me and a, and a perspective, you know, because it really is all about perspective. And so I would say, you know, fight the mental fight and stay happy and stay worth it. Stay of value to yourself and stay yourself and unique, you know, uh, because that's what, that, for me, the, the roles that I want to play are, are really unique, real individuals. So, you know, just, you know, be true to yourself and stay healthy, you know, stay, stay healthy and, you know, like go back to the bar if you get lost. And that, that's the saying, like, you know, like fine, like just go back to the work, you know, that's, it's so weird when I have an audition that I put off for so long because I get really angry at myself. And I don't know why I've put it off because I enjoy the process. Like I love that work. Like I love being alone on a Friday night, like rather than going out, which is probably what I'll do tonight because I've got an audition on Monday and I should look at it. And I will probably stay home and I won't turn the TV on and I'll put on some good music and and I'm gonna have like a good time with me and this other person in the room, which is your character, and like just 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 go back to the basics, you know, because that's I don't know. I used that's where I used to have a lot of fun, you know, or just it, you know, where it stops becoming work and it's just play. And I think that's, you know, Marilyn was was playful, you know, and we all know she secretly hated Marilyn Monroe or like didn't hated that she she couldn't be seen or wasn't happy with her career, but she knew like no matter what, like when she was working, like it was play, and it really shows from her, you know. I think that's something that's really everlasting about her as well is she's one of the most playful women still to date. I don't know if anyone has taken, can take her place one, because she's just epic, but I don't know anyone who's quite as childlike and playful and just full of, like, bubble. And, you know, that's a really, it's fun, you know, and it's spontaneous. And I don't know. So play and be healthy. And on that note, we'll have to end it there. Thank you so much, Kelly, oh, yeah. and all of you for coming. Happy Friday. <laughs>